Once again, welcome back to this uh, course on discrete mathematics. And we are continuing this lecture on um, logic of quantified statement part 2. So, in the earlier lectures, uh, we have seen about what is uh, quantifiers, especially we talked about the universal quantifier as well as the extensional quantifiers. So, now we are going to discuss more on this quantifiers and how a values can be binded for those quantifiers. So, as we move on, let us briefly see a note on the quantifiers first, just to have a summary of things that we have seen earlier. You can recall that p of x is a proportional function and then let p of x be where x equals 0. And recall that a proportion, a proposition is a statement that is either true or false, right? Yeah, you could remember that. And p of x is not a proposition here. So there are two ways to make a proportional function into a proposition. What are those two ways? Is just supply a value with it. For example, p of x, if x is, x is false, then if x is phi, then uh, p of phi is false. If x is 0, then it is true. Just imagine this, we are just talking about this particular uh, part in which uh, we say x equals 0. If x is phi, of course, this is going to be a false one and if x is 0, then we could say that it is true. In other words, uh, there are two ways in which you can make a proportional function into a proposition. One is supply a value, that is what we have just seen here. What is other way? Other way is to provide a quantification, that is what we have seen in the previous lecture. Quantification is the way in which you can define things to make it true or false. For example, we saw two quantifications methods, one is universal quantifiers, the other one is extensional quantifiers. Yes, for all values of x, p of x is false according to this particular function where x equals 0. So, for this function, for all areas of x, p of x is false and for some value of x, it is true. So, in other words, we can say there exists a value of x for which p of x is true. Yeah, so, for example, this is a value for which it is true. So, now can you understand how we can make a proportional function into a proposition? Yes, either supply a value to it or provide a quantification. With regards to this, we have this topic. Anyway, just to uh, wrap up this further, we know that uh, for quantification, always remember as discussed in the previous lectures, we should always have the universe of discourse and this has to be well defined, especially for the quantification part. So, that you can clearly say whether a universal quantifier or an extensional quantifier is true or false. So, with regards to this supply of value and the quantification, we have this topic of binding variables. So, let uh, say p of x comma y be x is greater than y. Let us consider for all values of x uh, such that p of x comma y is true. So, here it is uh, we should supply a value or we should have a way in which uh, you should specify the range, the domain has to be specified. Uh, without anything, we cannot just simply say 
this has to be a proposition because this function p of x comma y where x is greater than y we are not given with anything right we don't have anything so when you have nothing in hand you could simply say that it is not a proposition so now let's see what should be done to define it so we don't know exactly for what is y in this say for example uh, let's say if it's phi uh, then for all values of x p of x is false again consider you should always have this domain in hand say for example the domain is the list of integers and then if the value of y is say phi and you could say that for all values of x such that p of x comma y is false again if it's x minus 1 if y is x minus 1 then for all values of x p of x comma y is true well therefore which means that we are trying to note here y is not bound by a quantifiers so we have given a value for x and y such that it becomes a proposition in this example so we should always set uh, a universe and then based on that you may have to specify the conditions and accordingly you can see whether the universal quantifiers or the extensional quantifiers was, would work out or not let's say for example this uh, binding of variables is like assigning values to individual variables or using quantifiers you are assigning values using a quantifiers that can be defined as if we are binding the variables say for example you have uh, the universe as the integer let us say the set of integers set of integers is the say universe of discourse or universe or that is the domain let us say we are bounding it by that domain and if suppose you have uh, a statement in which say for all values of x such that x is less than x plus 1 or you can say there exists a value of x such that x is less than x plus 1. So basically it means that uh, from this logic you can see directly uh, this statement is kind of true it is true and this is going to be false or this x is uh, x plus 1 is greater than x is going to be true for all cases so if it is true for all cases then this is also going to be true right because we just have to show for one values of x such that that statement there exists a value of x for which x is less than x plus 1 so you can have uh, other forms as well and see whether this would work or not for example if you have for all values of x x equals x plus 1 so you can check whether this would be true or false if suppose say you give a value of x as say 2 or 3 and you can definitely say that this is going to be false so that is why in binding of variables we are assigning values to individual variables using kind of quantifiers so let us uh, briefly see one more point on it let us uh, quickly see through it so here is the statement here there exists a value of x such that p of x is true or you can simply say that for some value of x p of x 
or q of x. So, here x in q of x is not bound. So, since it is not bounded, it cannot be a proposition. So, you should always have a clear way of bounding it, because the q of x is defined as a function, but we are not sure whether this q of x, how it has been bounded. When I say bounded, I means that, I mean that, see we have two functions, one is p of x. This p of x is bounded by the fact of existential quantifiers. So, you know that the range of p of x. So, the p of x can be true for some value of x, right, or there should be at least a value of x, there exists a value of x such that p of x can be true. But what about q of x? It is not bounded, you are not sure what it is. So, as we have seen in the past, you cannot have a proposition to be true or false uh, at a given conditions, it, it can be any one. So, here it is another one, uh, there exists a value of x, p of x or for all values of x, q of x. So, you can see here, both x values are bounded, p of x is bounded with extensional quantifiers and uh, q of x is bounded by means of uh, the universal quantifiers. So, likewise uh, you can create a proposition. In other words, in fact, you can assign values to individual variables using the quantifiers. You are bounding with means of quantifiers. So, you can think about this uh, statement here. So, it seems all values are bounded here. Yes. And again, there is another one in which here y in q of y is not bounded. So, that is why that is not a proposition. So, we should be careful in uh, binding these variables. Negating quantification. So, that is an interesting part. For example, consider the statement all student in this class have a red hair. So, what is required to show that the statement is false? You just need one student, right? There exists a student in the class that does not have a red hair. If you can have one student in the class that does not have a red hair, if you can show it, then this, this statement is false. So, you can think about other similar statements. Say for example, I say all mathematicians wear glasses. What would be the negation? All mathematicians wear glasses. Does it pop in your mind that no mathematician wear glasses? What do you think? If suppose that is the case, no mathematician wear glasses, if you think that is the negation of the statement, all mathematician wear glasses. But if one does not wear glasses, no mathematician wear glasses statement does not fit. In other words, all mathematician wear glass is a, it will be a false statement. So, the correct negation for the statement all mathematician wear glasses would be, there is at least one mathematician who does not wear glasses. Did you get this point? Let us say another example. For all uh, primes or for all prime value p, p is odd. Say for example, for all, for all prime prime numbers, I am talking about prime numbers, for all prime p, p is odd. So, when you apply rules of negation, you could say that there exist a prime, 
there exists a prime p such that p is not odd. So, what we are trying to see is that you have a universal quantification and you are going to negate it and you are revealing it by means of an extensional quantification. Right? For all prime p, p is odd, that is a universal quantification we had. But when you negate that statement, it becomes as there exists a prime p such that p is not odd. Maybe you can think about the value 2 there. So, negation of a statement uh, all or is uh, equivalent to extensional statement some or not. Got it? So, when you have a negation of universal statement all or is equivalent to the extensional statement some or not or there at there exist at least one that is not. So, let us uh, consider this statement again all student in the class right. So, we are talking about a universal statement all or all student or. So, if you want to negate or if you want to prove it as, it as false, the equivalent uh, extensional statement would be some or not or there is at least one that is not. So, you have to just show that there exists a student in the class that does not have a red hair. So, that is the main idea begin behind this uh, negation, negating uh, universal quantification. So, you negate the proportional function and you change to an extensional quantification just like this, negate the universal statement for all of p of for all values of x p of x is equal to some values of x or there exists a value of x such that p of x is not negation of p of x. Yes. So, that is one way of looking at. Let us move on into this negation property, because remember this property is quite important property and uh, you can use it later on for uh, solving certain problems, because they have the equivalence relation here. So, further going on to this uh, negating quantification, consider this statement, there is a student in the class with red hair. So, what is required to show the statement is false? So, the question is, uh, it is about there is a student in this class with a red hair, there is only one right. So, if you want to show that this statement is false, all student in this class do not have the red hair. You have to show that everyone does not have a red hair, then you will prove that statement is false. As yes, consider, do not you see that this statement is an extensional statement, there exists a student, yeah this one is an extension statement right and you want to make it or negate this one. So, for which you have to use a universal quantifier and you are using this one not negation of the function p of x. The same way we did for the previous slide for universal quantification. So, you can think about different examples. Say for example, some ice cream or same. So, you can say that no ice cream or the same or all ice cream or different. 
yeah negation of an extensional quantifier is uh, is like sum or is logically equivalent to the statement uh, none or or all or not for example so i what i mean is here if you have an extensional st extensional statement sum or or you have at least one. So, in this case there is a student only one student there. So, if there is this extension statement if you want to negate it you have to use this universal quantifiers and you can have a negation here it is. So, to negate the extensional quantification you negate you have to negate the proportional function and you change the universal quantification. So, negation of the extensional quantifier there exists a value of x such that p of x equals to for all values of x negation of p of x. Yes, that is some of the properties here. Translating from English. So, we will also come across many statements where we have to translate into a logical symbols. Consider for, for every student in this class, that student has studied calculus. Let us rephrase it for every student x in this class x has studied calculus. Let c of x be x has studied calculus and s of x is a student x is a student. So, for all values of x c of x is true if the universe of discourse is all student in this class. So, you can consider how these things can be expressed you are translating from English. Let us consider more on this uh, translation of these statements. So, what about uh, the universe of discourse for all the students or all people. So, for all values of x s of x and c of x. So, this could be wrong because you could see for all values of x s of x implies c of x. Can you recall what is s of x and c of x? c of x we said that x has studied calculus and s of x is x is a student. So, we have to define the universe correctly. If is this the universe consists of all the students in the class or uh, does it consist of all the students in the university? Yeah, that has to be specified. Anyway, for this part we will see another options. Let uh, q of x comma y be x has studied y and uh, in this way we can say that for all values of x s of x implies q of x comma calculus. So, now we are uh, bounding and now we are including all features. So, that it would not be confused when making the translation of English. Let us see more on this translation. Consider some student have visited Mexico. Every student in this class have visited Canada or Mexico. So, let us s of x uh, be x is a student in this class m of x x has visited Mexico c of x x has visited Canada. So, some student have visited Mexico let us rephrase this and there exists a student who has visited Mexico. 
So, if this is the case, then there is there exist or for some values of x m of x. In other words, this part extensional quantification of x m of x is true if the universe of discourse is all students. What about if the student, I mean, what about if the universe of discourse is all people? That would be definitely wrong. So, that is why it is very essential for us to define what is the universe of discourse. And every time, whenever you have a question regarding this, you always first notice what is your universe of discourse. So, likewise you can see here uh, there exists an x such that s of x and m of x. Let us consider one more part, every student in this class has visited Canada or Mexico. So, for all values of x, which means every student in the class has visited m of x, has visited Mexico and uh, we are using or m of x or c of x visited Mexico or Canada. So, when the universe of discourse is all students, you can apply this and if the universe of discourse is all people, you can say that s of x implies m of x or c of x. So, you can consider various ways in which you can uh, go on using this translation of English statements. So, here is other one, uh, it would be easier to define uh, as such like for all values of x, s of x and v of x comma Mexico. So, that would be easier as well, you can see this uh, is quite interesting uh, example, you can see all hummingbirds are richly colored, no large birds live in live on honey, birds that do not live on honey are dull in color, hummingbirds are small. So, let us p of x be x is a hummingbird, q of x is x is large, r of x is x is x lives on honey, s of x is x is richly colored. Well, these examples can give you detailed uh, explanation for translating from English. So, let the universe of discourse be all birds, ok. We have defined the universe of discourse here, let us see here. So, we know what is p of x, q of x, r of x and s of x. So, these functions are given, let us try to translate the statements, all humming birds are richly colored. So, how do we define it? You know x is a hummingbird that is p of x, x is richly colored that is s of x. So, for all values of x, p of x implies s of x. No large birds live on honey. You know what is a large bird, so that is q of x and lives on honey is r of x and you have no which is a negation operator. So, you can say negation of there exists a bird such that that is large and lives on honey ok. Let us go to the third one, before we go to the third one you can also say this way alternatively uh, for all birds this uh, there is no large birds or no birds that are lives on honey that is uh, for all values of x negation of q of x or negation of r of x. Then comes the birds that do not live on honey or dull in color. So, for all values of x negation of r implies negation of s. Humming birds are small for all values of x p of x implies negation of q of x. Yes because q of x is large, so we have a negation there to show that it is small. So, at times when you can use the prolog or programming language to define the logic. So, here is a simple example of how Lee, Bob, Alice, Cathay taking some uh, math class, 
So let's, uh, you can try to enter the predicate values like teachers, instructor, enrolled classes and try to extract these informations. Probably right now you will be using C++ or Java for that matter or other, any other programming language where you can try to use a similar logics to extract the informations, datas. Multiple quantifiers, you can have multiple quantifiers on a statement. For example, for all values of x, there exist y such that p of x comma y. So for all values of x, yeah, there exist a y such that p of x y. So here is an example where uh, for all values of x, there exist y such that x plus y is equal to 0. You can see for all values of x and there may be one value of y for which it is 0. Again, for all values of x, for there, is, there exist of this part is uh, for some value of x such that there is for all values of y, p of x y, comma y is true. Some values of x, there exists a y such that x times y equals 0. For all values of y there, okay. Order of quantifiers. So, this part, there exists a value of x such that for all values of y and uh, for all values of x, there exists a value of y, they are not equivalent. So, do not get confused. So, if you want to prove it, you can try with some examples. Here, p of x comma y, where x plus y equals 0 is false. In this case, it is true. Is not it interesting? Yeah, try to get the logic behind and try to understand the basic idea behind the entire thing negating multiple quantifiers. So, as you try to negate the multiple quantifiers, you can use the negation rule. Here as you can see negation of uh, for all values of x, p of x equals, there exists a value of x, negation p of x. So, yeah, similarly you can use the idea. Essentially, you just change the quantifiers and negate its quantification. For example, this shows us an example where try to put this negation inside as you take this negation in, you can see there is an intermediate step in which you are changing the quantifiers from uh, universal quantifiers to an extension quantifiers and you are taking the negation inside. So, that is an uh, example. Here is three quantifiers, multiple quantifiers or a negation is there. First step, you take the negation and change the quantifiers for all values of x has been changed to some value of x and again some value of y is changed to all values of y and all values of z is changed to some values of z. That is how the step goes on. It is also useful for our examinations as well as manipulation later on. So, let us see this one. So, left hand side and right hand side are there. Let us try to see prove or disprove this part. To disprove this, uh, you can negate, you can show that there exists a x such that for all values of y, p is false. And you can consider another statement there. You have both right side and left side states uh, there exists an x such that for all y, p is true. Again, if you want to disprove this statement, you need to show that for all values of x, there exists a y such that p is false. Yeah, you can translate between this English and quantifiers, the product of two negative integers is positive, something similar. So, you can use this, there exist for all values of x and for all values of y, x is less than 0 and y is less than 0. This implies that x times y is greater than 0. So, you can use the conditional instead of and if you like and average of two positive integers is positive. Again, for all values of x and for all values of y, x is greater than 0 and y is greater than 0. This implies that x plus y by 2 is greater than 0. In other words, the average of two positive integers is positive. So, difference of two negative integers 
not necessarily negative. So, in order to show that there exists a value of x and there exists a value of y such that x is less than 0 and y is less than 0 and x minus y is greater than or equal to 0. So, you can still consider using the conditional operator instead of uh, and or and instead of conditional. Absolute values of the sum of two integers does not exceed the sum of absolute values of these integers. So, this one you can consider this example here, we are using absolute value part, absolute value of x and y is given there. So, here is uh, another example in which uh, there exists a value of x such that for all values of y, x plus y is equal to y. So, there exists an additive identity for all real numbers. Here is another one for all values of x and for all values of y, x is greater than 0 and y is less than 0 and this implies that x minus y is greater than 0. This is a non-negative number minus a negative number is greater than 0 property. Again, the difference between two positive numbers is not necessarily a non-positive, it can be positive. So, there exists a value of x and there exists a value of y such that x is less than or equal to 0 and y is also less than or equal to 0 and x minus y is greater than 0. And the last property here is x for all values of x and all values of y such that x is not equal to 0 and y is not equal to 0 and this we have this bidirectional biconditional operator where x times y is not equal to 0. The product of two non-negative numbers is non-zero if and only if both factors are non-zero. Yes, with this negation, uh, let us see this simple example. We take in the negation where uh, we change the quantifiers. In this example, we change the existential quantifier into universal quantifier and then again as it moves inside we can change again the extension into universal quantifiers. So, initially it, with, it was with extension quantifiers and finally, we can see after two part of negation, it goes into universal quantifiers. The same way you can look at this example, where the universal quantifier changes into extension quantifiers and again extension quantifier changes into universal quantifiers and the negation is carried over to the function p of x comma y. So, here is another example, you can consider this uh, looks little uh, larger examples. Uh, the equation looks larger, but you can still take this negation inside step by step. As you move on, you can change the quantifiers and you can negate the functions that is coming after the quantifiers. So, extension quantifier has been changed to universal quantifier and the negation is going into this part. And as you take the negation further down, you can see how again the extensional quantifiers change into universal quantifiers and universal quantifiers are changed into extensional quantifiers and so on. So, here is uh, more examples to show with uh, three or multiple quantifiers x, y, z. So, you can take one step at a time and change the quantifiers and take the negation inside. Yes, change it, take it inside, change it, take it inside and finally, you have the function t of a negation of uh, t x comma y comma z. Likewise, you can do the same thing uh, for this example here. Take the negation inside, yeah, you have to remove the brackets, taking it inside one step at a time, right. So, these are the examples that we have seen here. And today, we talked about uh, how to bind the variables and uh, moreover, after binding the variables, you can specify uh, the quantifiers, the universe as well as uh, after defining uh, about the universal quantifiers and extensional quantifiers. In fact, we can see how to translate from English sentences. We saw a few examples and these examples can help you to understand how you can work out with these uh, principles. Basically, sometimes when you have a sentence, at times you may have to rephrase the sentence such that 
it can uh, imply either a universal quantification or exponential quantification, so that you can express this sentence into the symbolic logics. And finally, in the end we talked about the negation, how the negating principle is useful for you to simplify certain uh, logics, as well as later on you can see how this can be used to solve certain uh, logical problems. So, with this we finish this lecture today and uh, until then, uh, until I see you in the next class, have a nice time and goodbye.